Tidligere i dag talte jeg med lektor i medievidenskab ved Rutgers Universitet i USA, Deepak Kumar, om hvordan ser jeg som netop den her homeland er med til at forme vores opfattelse af krigen mod terror. Og jeg startede med at bede hende om at give en tolkning af plakaten for fjerde sæson. Det er den, vi ser her på skærmen bag mig. Well, this uh, image really captures the politics of the show because what it is is a visual embodiment of what's called the clash of civilizations, right? Where we in the West, Western civilization, is one that values women's rights, that allows women to be agents in the world, right? She's wearing a different outfit. She's a, she's an active individual in the world. And they, that is the people who supposedly belong to Islamic culture, are backward, are oppressed. It's a society that, you know, shrouds women in clothing and so on. And I think that's a completely distorted view, not just of Muslim-majority countries, but even of the United States. And, and then what is supposed to, supposed to make us think about the show? Well, what it makes us think about the show is that, first of all, the name of the show is Homeland. And what it does is it creates a homeland that appears to be a lot more vulnerable to attacks, usually attacks from Muslims, either white Muslims like the main character Brody, or brown Muslims and terrorists and so on and so forth. And therefore, we need to constantly be afraid that there's going to be a terrorist attack right around the corner. And furthermore, that we need to accept the massive national security state that has come up that systematically violates the rights and, and civil liberties of people in this country, whether you're talking about invasive surveillance, whether you're talking about, uh, you know, people, uh, agents infiltrating communities and collecting information and so on and so forth. What the show does is it, it scares us into accepting that domestically in this country, as well as wars abroad, as we're seeing right now, in terms of the U.S. intervention into uh, Iraq, but also into Syria. Which influence do you think that shows as Homeland and before that 24 have on us? Um, essentially, after the events of 9-11, what you have seen is a ratcheting up of the number of shows and movies that actually focus on the so-called terrorist threat. Now, I say so-called not because there aren't people who do want to do harm to Americans, to Westerners, and so on, but in proportion to the amount of time and attention that is paid in the cultural sphere to these uh, forms of danger, you know, it's completely out of uh, proportion. So one is twice as likely in the United States to die from a bolt of lightning striking your head than from a terrorist attack. Um, and so the cultural work of shows like 24 and shows like Homeland is really to keep us scared. And this is exactly how it worked during the Cold War as well. There were constantly movies and TV shows and so on, as well as uh, drills. You know, people used to do these civil defense drills where they would hide underneath their desks in preparation for a nuclear attack from the Soviet Union. And, and the question is, what is the point of all of this? It is to keep people scared so that they give their consent to the national security state domestically and to wars abroad. According to Amnesty International, a survey from them, one in four, 29% of people believe torture is a necessary tool to retrieve information because of TV shows as Homeland, Spooks and 24. What does that tell you? Well, uh, that, that tells you that culture is not something that is just entertainment. You know, people tend to dismiss cultural products as something that exists, you know, in a separate world from the world of politics. And I think the fact that not only do people accept the poll that you just mentioned, but 65% of Americans also accept drone strikes and think that it's a good way to actually fight terrorism, when in fact, you know, again, Amnesty and other groups have shown that, you know, thousands of civilians, innocent civilians, uh, get killed. And, and then again, all of that has to do with how we have a certain mindset that is cultivated that suggests that there are these awful, evil people uh, against which all of these means need to be uh, developed. And by the way, I just want to add that it's not just after 9-11 that we have seen the rise of this, you know, menacing, uh, all-encompassing terrorist threat. In fact, in the United States and from Hollywood, this process actually begins in the 1970s 
Um, and then you see the racialization of the terrorists through a series of films that take place in the 1980s, so much so that when Timothy McVeigh, a homegrown terrorist, actually carries out an attack on Oklahoma City, immediately the news media say, it must be Muslims, it must be Arabs, and so on. And so what's happened over the last four decades is there's a mindset that's cultivated that says, first of all, brown people, Muslims who are from the Middle East, South Asia, North Africa, and so on, are these rotten, you know, violent individuals. We should lock them up. And should there be any kind of attack, the immediate response is war, right? Um, and so in response to the beheadings, the unfortunate, tragic beheadings of the two American journalists, um, war has been declared uh, on Syria and in Iraq. And, uh, uh, you know, last year when the Obama administration wanted to uh, carry out a war on Syria, the vast majority of people in this country said no. But now you've seen the media hype around these two unfortunate executions and the programming, the cultural programming says, OK, let's go ahead and bomb them. Let's get into another war, which, frankly, even you know, generals and others in this country are saying the U.S. can't really win.